Using Xenon Flash Tubes by Lewis Laughlin. Here we will explore the theory of operation and use of Xenon Flash Tubes. Pictured here is our all too common horseshoe shaped flash tube. Here is a more complex horseshoe shaped flash tube with a nice little uh, donut twist in the center. Here is the flash tube you will find most often in your flash cameras. All flash tubes, regardless of shape, still consist of a glass tube filled with a low pressure gas such as xenon. The, the ends of the tube are connected to a high voltage capacitor that stores a charge. When we apply a high voltage trigger pulse to the tube, the gas will become ionized, forming positive xenon ions and free electrons. This basically allows the capacitor to discharge through the tube, producing a very bright white flash. The, the, the negative side is the larger electrode. Here is a picture of my flash tube test setup that we will be exploring in the rest of this video. Here's a closer view of my board. It consists of the tube. The dark square thing off to the right is the trigger transformer and the various other small parts. Here is a schematic of the board and the external flash capacitor. Initially, we're going to be charging a capacitor C1 up through a 100K resistor R2. This is connected through the transformer to switch 1. When I press switch 1, the capacitor will discharge through the primary of the transformer, producing a high voltage pulse that will ionize the gas in the tube, allowing the capacitor C3 to discharge through the tube. In addition, we have a resistor R1. This is, I call it a quenching resistor. This allows what will happen without that resistor um, is when the tube is conducting, uh, this will allow the capacitor to discharge and, and will allow the tube to turn off. Without that particular resistor, you can literally short the power line out through the flash tube and destroy the tube. Capacitor C3 is a special photo flash capacitor. As you notice on the upper left, we have to use a high voltage source to power the circuit. This is a voltage doubler that you can connect to a 120 volt AC line. Uh, voltage doublers are covered on my website, but to say the least, this can be dangerous. You're producing a, uh, about a 340 volt voltage and it, it can be pretty lethal if you don't watch what you're doing. In this example, which is also in the photograph of my uh, test setup, is a low voltage to high voltage inverter. This would be the preferred safe way to go. This is my uh, original flash tube circuit, but I have added a device called a SIDAC. A SIDAC will trigger itself on when C1 charges up to a certain point. It will turn itself on, allowing C1 to discharge. Here's what the waveform across the SIDAC as it is operating. You will see that it's charging up to a level before it discharges and conducts. At that point, it produces the high voltage pulse. Here's another variation of my original circuit, but I'm using a low voltage digital circuit, perhaps, to trigger on a SCR. Here is another variation of the original circuit. I'm charging up a capacitor through a 3.3 meg resistor and, and discharging that through a couple of NE2 lamps to cut on an SCR. 
Here is your typical trigger transformer that produces the high voltage to ionize the tube. And they come in different sizes and shapes. And here is a completed 12 volt board that has the high voltage circuits, inverter, everything built onto a single board operates off of 12 volts. This come out of a flasher unit used on top of a school bus. And that completes this brief view of Xenon flash tubes. To find out more, visit my website at www.bristolwatch.com. Thanks for viewing.